I was wondering uh, what your personal interpretation of First Corinthians 14 was, and if you believe that speaking in tongues is still used today. No, come on, give me a hard question. <laughs> now, there are going to be godly men who disagree with me. Um, especially on the nuances of these things. When I read the old, old writers, they had a lot more freedom to talk about the fullness of the Holy Spirit, the baptism of the Holy Spirit and gifts because they were not confronted in their day with the thing, with the extreme charismatic movement that we have. Okay. Now, Baptists are reactionary. When they see heresy, they react against it. But sometimes they fall into heresy on the other side. You know, there's someone who will look at the charismatic movement, people like the, you know, arch heretic, Benny Hinn and other people like that. And they'll realize all that is false, but then they'll go so far the other way that, um, that they no longer even believe in the Holy Spirit, or if they do, it's just a doctrinal issue. There's no sense of experience. There are people who are just their whole life is experience, false experiences, and they have no grounding in the word. And so, you know, some Christians look at that and they go over here and they get in the word and they have no experience. Um, the Holy Spirit, it is impossible to live the Christian life without the Holy Spirit. We should be constantly praying for greater and greater manifestations of the spirit, outpourings of the spirit. Our lives should be supernatural. Now, when it comes to tongues, the big issue that everybody says is, are they for today or are they not? And uh, everybody says that's the question. And some say, yes, they are. And others say, no, they're not. Um, I don't think that's the question. I don't think that's the problem. I think the problem is this. For example, theologically, I will not say, even though men godlier than I would disagree with me, theologically or doctrinally, I do not say that tongues have ceased. All right. So everybody thinks, oh, man, he believes in tongues. No, hold it. I just don't think that's the issue. When I go to the text, I cannot. You know, I see the arguments and stuff, but I can't say that I can say in my conscience that these things have ceased. But here's what I do do. Um, I look at what tongues are in the scriptures and I don't see them anywhere today. What I see in the scriptures as being tongues, and I compare that to, to people who say they speak in tongues, I see something completely different. So see, I, I, some people are cessationist. That means they believe tongues have ceased. I kind of call myself a practical cessationist in the sense that I do not say those things have ceased. I've seen God heal people. You know, but have I seen a man who had the gift of healing? No. Have I have I? Here's what I think. I, I believe tongues in the book of Acts. Every time it occurs, it is a it is a real phonetic language. It is. It's a real phonetic language. And. Uh, those are the only examples of tongues we have. And they're real phonetic languages. And when they occurred, everybody knew something supernatural was going on. I mean, if I just sit here and repeat over and over, I think she wrote a Honda. I think she wrote a Honda. <laughs> There's nothing supernatural about that. But if a man walks in from Uzbekistan and I begin to talk to him the gospel in his dialect, everybody's going to know something's going on. All right, I believe that they were always, and, and I don't see that today. Now, I have heard on the fringe of missions where the gospel was entering in, even in modern times, 
godly Baptist and Presbyterian missionaries will tell you that strange things occurred. But so that's the way I look at it. All you have to do now, if you say tongues and all that have ceased, you know, and you, you've got your theological reasons, your doctrinal reasons for that. You know, I know godly men, men that that have mentored me that I love who believe that. But in my conscience, where I am looking at scripture, I don't say that. But I do say this. Define the gifts and you'll see that these supernatural manifestations and you will find that 95 percent at least of the people who say they've done them and have them. It's a total contradiction to what the Bible says. So stay. Just compare it to the word. Now. Some people will look at 1 Corinthians and say, but there's a tongue of angels, you know, 1 Corinthians 13. That's not what he's saying. He could be using hyperbole there. I mean, you know, if, if I said, if I was as big as a house, I wouldn't fight you. It doesn't mean I'm as big as a house. And Paul says, if I speak in the tongues of angels, but have not love, that doesn't mean that there are men who speak in the tongues of angels. And the fact that they say in 1 Corinthians 14, well, you know, it's an unknown tongue there. No one understands him. And in the book of Acts, when they spoke, everyone understood them. But in 1 Corinthians, they speak and no one understands. So it's a different kind of tongue. No, no one understands because no one spoke the language there that he was speaking and there was no interpreter to interpret it. You see? And so... uh, I guess that's what I think in a nutshell. There's no stipulation on the payment that was made that would ever extricate the defendant from being saved. If he prayed and received, repented and confessed, and believed the land's blood paid the penalty for death, then he is free. Freer than the convict off a plea. Now he could properly digest the fear of the king of kings. He know it's healthy that we agree and esteem the creator and the ruler.